All righty, welcome everyone. I see some folks trickling in. Just give everyone a second to join. All righty, I think we can get started. All right, thank you all for joining us today and another welcome. Um, we are going to be talking about um, aqueous ozone as an emerging healthy building technology. Um, this is the second webinar in our healthy building series. Um, my name is Kayla Musel. I'm the new program manager for the US GBC of West Michigan. Um, we are very excited to have Chris Thompson here with us today, um, the Chief Technology Officer at 3OE Scientific. He's going to tell us all about the Iggy hand washing station, um, which I've had the privilege of using. Um, I know this is a fun format for us to do this in. Um, but it is it is quite something. We were just talking about how my I was like my hands felt really soft afterwards. My ring was shiny, and he was like, "Oh, and it cleaned your hands, right?" <laughs> so um, I'm very excited to to learn more about this today. Um, and we also want to give a big thank you to our sponsor, Hedrick. Um, and Mark's information will be given out at the end of the presentation um, as they are our local rep for Iggy. Um, just a couple of housekeeping things. There is a chat feature and a Q&A feature. Um, please try to keep your questions to the Q&A so that it keeps us a little bit more organized. Um, and then, you know, but feel free to use the chat for any sort of comments. Um, you can actually go ahead and introduce yourself right now if you'd like. Why don't you uh, throw out what your favorite summer like party food is? Um, mine is pasta salad right now. That's what I can't get enough of. Um, so why don't you all go ahead and do that? And um, like I said, this is our second webinar in the series. Last, well, in May, we talked about um, the well certification. If you uh, were unable to attend that one and would like to watch, um, or if you miss any of this one, or you know, if there's if you um, want to go back and watch this one again, you can at our YouTube link down at the bottom. I will also have Allie throw that link in the chat as well. And our next webinar will be on August 17th at 11 a.m. Um, know your rating systems, exploring green globes and bream. Um, just keep an eye out for that registration link in our upcoming newsletters. And then if you are enjoying this content, um, think about becoming a member. We can't do this work without you. Um, and we really greatly appreciate all of the support. Um, you can scan the QR code here, or I will have um, Allie put the link to the web page in the chat as well. And a big thank you to our visionary supporters, DTE, Consumers Energy, Eagle and the Weggy Foundation. Again, we can't do this work um, without all of that support. So big, big thank you. And with that, I will let Chris share his screen. We'll do a Q&A around 11.45 and wrap this thing up <coughs> around noon. So Chris, you can go ahead. All righty. Let's get this working here. Okay, uh, welcome everyone. And today we're gonna to talk about Iggy and aqueous ozone, and we're gonna have some fun. We're gonna talk about some science and some so what. So please, um, if you have questions, uh, ask them, save them till the end. I'll try to get to as many as we can in the time that we have. Hey, well, as we get, go ahead. Uh, could you share your screen? Oh. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm looking at it right here. I, I thought it was. No problem, I, uh, I will do that. Give me just a moment here. Let's 
See, we, we had it all worked out beforehand. Now we're having technical difficulties. Share screen. Awesome. <clears throat> All righty. Okay. So you, you see my screen now, right? Is that true? Yep. Sorry. Good to go. Okay. Good to, to that go. Presenter mode. Yep. And we do see, yep. Not a problem. How about that? Okay, technical difficulties aside, let's get back to where we're going here. <clears throat> so a little bit about me, uh, we'll get the boring parts out of the way first. Um, I've been doing this for a long time and I'm based in Dallas, Texas. And one of the things that was really interesting about my past is I've spent 35 years in innovation and design and development and that goes to this technology. I actually got started in this technology about 20 years ago <clears throat> when I met a man who said he outlicensed the ability to make diamonds conductive and was looking for something to do with that. Well, after many dinners and a lot of conversation, I think we found out something to do with it. And that's gonna be part of how we talk about Iggy going forward. So one of the problems we've got, and we've had this problem ever since the dawn of man, is that we're all covered in germs. And we, at any one time, this is the gross part, everyone is covered in a little over 1 trillion different microbes. Now, the good part of that is the vast majority of those are positive. We want them. They are our biome. They help us. But every now and then there are some bad actors that get into play and they can make us sick. We all know a great number of them, right? Influenza, norovirus, E. coli, and everyone's got their own list. We want the good bugs, but we don't want the bad bugs. We also know that about 80% of all communicable diseases are transmitted through touch. Now, some diseases are touch only, some are touch and aerosol, some are just aerosol, but the vast majority are by touch. Now, the, the neat photo that you see is just a Petri dish, and it's a Petri dish that had someone who just washed their hand, dried it off, put it in the Petri dish, and that's after 24 hours. So washing your hands doesn't kill everything. And that's our challenge that we're here to talk about. Everyone's washed your hands. You've learned how to wash your hands. Most folks can't tell you when. You learned it from your mother way, way back when you were a little child. And we all tried to do it right. The problem with doing it right is it's really, really hard. 95% of people who attempt to wash their hands with soap and water do it incorrectly. Now, Let's define what correct is and, and not correct. Correct is, according to the CDC, <clears throat> 20 to 30 seconds of washing your hands. And there's a little bit of hand jive magic that has to happen. You have to rub your hands together in a certain way. You have to rub your fingers, the webs between your fingers, the back of the hands, wrestle your thumbs. Everyone has probably seen the chart on how to wash your hands. Now, of the people that enter, for example, a public restroom, we know that about 18% of those people attempt to wash their hands. Of those 18%, only 5% do it sort of right. And I want to bring up the next point as well. Hand gel has become almost the ubiquitous replacement for soap and water. Right. It's been around well before the pandemic, but during the pandemic, it saw an immense surge of hand gel. Everyone had it in their pockets, had it in the car, had it at the desk at work. <clears throat> We're squirting gel like crazy. Well, if you read the instructions on the back of the, the jar of hand gel, 
there is a certain way to apply hand gel that the manufacturers say is appropriate. And it's quite similar to washing your hands. You have to make sure you get full coverage. You have to keep your hands wetted for a certain amount of time, 20 to 30 seconds. And <clears throat> that gives you the benefit that the manufacturer set forth. We'll talk a little bit more about soap and water and about hand gel as we go forward. But this is the common state of the art, how to keep your hands clean. Why do you wanna keep your hands clean? So that you don't communicate those 80% of diseases by touch. Let's enter Iggy. <clears throat> Here's a picture of Iggy. Iggy is up to six times more effective than soap and water or hand gel in just seven seconds. But just think about that. Instead of singing your ABCs twice or happy birthday twice and having to do everything just prescribed correctly, you put your hands in Iggy in seven seconds, you've got the benefit. Now there's a couple reasons why, and we'll, we'll start getting into some of the science here. This idea of parasitic drag and aqueous ozone. There's really a one-two punch that Iggy applies to the hands to provide its benefit, right? And I wanna show these two. These are pictures of Iggy in application. The left hand is Cobb County in a school. The right hand is the Ohana Institute down in Florida. These are just ways that Iggy gets applied for children to use, for adults to get used. And that's important, it's not something that is simply for an adult population. It's safe for kids as well. <clears throat> but back to parasitic drag and aqueous ozone and a little bit of science. So we have re-engineered water and I know there's a lot of people that use that phrase, but this is what we've done. If you take a look at the photo on the left, you see a tap, water coming out of a tap. Pretty simple, everyone has seen that. We call that laminar flow. If you look at the photo on the right, kind of looks like a Christmas tree spray. That's because it is. In our product, Iggy, we take tap water, feed water that would go into a water fountain or uh, any other potable water source that you have. And we run it through a special spray nozzle that oscillates the water back left and right. And you can see from that photo of a strobe, a water is oscillating left and right. But what's more important than that oscillation is that we break that water stream up into individual sized balls of water. Those balls are all about the same size, a millimeter to a millimeter and a quarter. And you can see in, in the picture, uh, a zoomed in photo of some of those balls of water. Those balls of water have two unique things. One, very, very high spin rate, an oiler spin, that when they impact your hand to you, you feel it as a gentle spray. At the surface of the skin, it's quite um, mechanical in loosening the microbes on your skin. That ball of water also carries with it dissolved in the water, created in the water and dissolved in the water, the aqueous ozone. And we'll talk a little bit about aqueous ozone here. Now that may be a common term for some, it may be a new term for others. And I wanna spend a little bit of time going over what aqueous ozone is. First and foremost, it's a natural disinfectant. It occurs in nature. We didn't create anything synthetic. All we did to create ozone in solution was to take the water molecule H2O in a certain specific proprietary way. We break it in half, separate the H2 from the O. The O's combine back together into O3. And O3 is ozone. O2 is oxygen. Oxygen is what fish breathe in the water. We make O3. And what's really, really important about O3 
And this is the most technical we'll get in this talk. When an ozone molecule comes into contact with a bacteria or virus or fungus, it wants to give up one oxygen atom. And it gives up that oxygen atom to the cell wall of the bacteria or the virus. When it does that, in order to make room for that oxygen atom to fit in the cell wall, the lipoproteins primarily, it makes a hole. And when you get enough holes in the cell wall, the cell fails and the bacterium is dead. Now that's really, really important because it's a natural way to destroy a bacteria. The bacteria is destroyed, which means we don't create or aid in creating pathogen resistance. You've heard of superbugs, right? We don't do that at all. We can't do that because of this mechanism. And I think that's really important to understand. The last part to understand in this chemical process is once you cough up that oxygen atom, you're left with a dead bacteria or a virus and oxygen, O2. That oxygen that's left means that the resultant is an oxygen rich environment and that helps healing of your skin. So as you heard, when we just opened up, wow, I put my hands in and they came out and they were really, really soft. That's why they're really soft. And that's important compared to soap or alcohol that dry your hands because of the mechanism that they work. It's alcohol or it's a surfacant in soap. So there's a lot of chemistry happening. It happens very, very quickly. And we create this ozone on demand in solution. There's no gas that floats around. So as we get to the rest of the presentation, think about what I just went through. And if you have questions, we can address that as, as we finish up. Here's a video, a really complicated training video. That's how you use Iggy. It's just that easy. So it sounds really good. It sounds very impactful. What's the secret sauce? We talked about um, the science behind it, but let's open up that conversation a little bit larger. Now we know how Iggy works. Let's get in a little bit of the so what. So Iggy by the numbers, for every single cycle, Every time you put your hands in, you don't touch anything. It recognizes your hands automatically, turns off automatically, uses one third of a gallon of water. It's very low power consumption. In fact, on an hourly basis, and assumes that lots of people are putting their hands in for a minute, it uses less than half the, half the power of a residential hairdryer. There is no solid waste stream. You don't throw anything out. There's no boxes or bags or packaging. There's no chemicals that go down the wastewater stream. Think about that. The water that is used in Iggy, once it contacts your hands, provides its benefit, when it goes down the drain, it is as clean as it was coming in. In fact, any excess ozone gets used to inhibit or lessen the biofilm that forms in the down tube in the P trap. That's important. We'll talk a little bit about that. So what? I mean, you use a little bit of water, a little power. There's less waste than current solutions. It is the same at best most times 90% or better, it is a improved operational cost perspective. It is faster. And that's really important about fast. Our research shows that of the people who try to wash their hands, they spend about seven seconds at it. 
They don't do the whole time. That's where seven seconds came from. People who go to the bathroom and come out, don't wash their hands, 100% of them use Iggy. So people are bypassing that sink that they've known for their whole life and they use Iggy. That's what faster gets you. The biofilm is important, particularly in medical settings. People clean their sinks, people are spraying bleach everywhere, wiping it down. But the minute you turn the tap on because you're in the hospital room with Aunt Mary, the water contacts that biofilm, which is a collection of virus and bacteria and plumes it back into the air. That's one of the struggles that medical facilities have. We eliminate that downstream. A little bit more detail on the numbers and comparisons, right? Because a third of a gallon of water for Iggy, that's great. What do other technologies use? Soap, if you run the tap, turn it on, wash your hands for the prescribed time the CDC says, depending on where you are in the world, you're about a gallon and a half to three gallons. Now that assumes that you put your hands in right away and you don't allow the water to warm up. If you do, it's more. If you use warm water, which most folks would, it takes two to 300 watts to warm that three gallons up. Soap, you have solid waste. You have to throw the packaging away, right? The box or the bag, it's got to go back into the landfill. And soap residue goes to the water treatment plant. It has to be pulled back out for that water to recycle back to potable water. And soap, even though it's a surfacant, can provide nucleation sites to create biofilms. Alcohol, right? Squirty, squirty out of the bottle. Yeah, there's no water to use the alcohol gel. You don't. But it takes over 25 gallons of water to create the alcohol that went into that eight ounce bottle. It takes about 100 watts of power to create the alcohol for that eight ounce bottle. When you're done, the bottle goes into the landfill and the alcohol and other um, waste products in the production of alcohol eventually go down the drain, right? The emulsifiers and so forth. For Iggy, we talked, it's a third of a gallon of water that goes in. It's about five watts for seven seconds worth of use. And it eliminates the biofilm instead of creating one. Now, we're gonna talk about safety in just a minute, but I want to step up to 100,000 feet and I'm big on the so what. We walk through how Iggy is good. We walk through how it works. So what? We're here to talk about healthy buildings. And when we talk about healthy buildings, we talk about, wow, we don't want Legionnaire's disease. We don't want temperature swings, we don't want mold. We want an environment that we can control with temperature, humidity, fenestration. These are typical elements that get controlled. Controlling the spread of disease by human touch is as important as any of the other elements that play a role in well buildings. Typically, we say, well, the building code said you need so many sinks, you need so many bubblers, you need so many this, and we put soap next to the sink and, hey, I met the requirement. Well, you only met the requirement if people use it. This is a way to let people do what they always wanted to do. It gives them the tool to enable them for success. That's what Iggy does. And now we'll talk about safety and efficacy, but keep that in mind as we go through this safety and efficacy part. So safe and effective, everyone's heard those two words and they're always paired together, safe and effective. Doesn't matter if it's effective, if it's not safe. Aqueous ozone is not new. It's been around for over a hundred years. And it's been in some places that you might not have recognized, but that you touch on a daily basis. So these pictures on this chart, in the upper left-hand corner, you see some pretty attractive fruits and vegetables. 
when fruits and vegetables are brought from the farm, in many cases, they're gone through the processing plant, they're packaged and go to the grocery store for you to buy. In that process, the microbes are destroyed on those fruits and vegetables in an ozonated water bath, particularly for apples and um, bell peppers and these types of fruits and vegetables. That way, when you buy them in a bag at the grocery store, they stay fresh longer. That's how. There's other treatments, but that's one of the treatments. One of the common ways we see ozonated water in our daily life is in the upper right-hand corner. If I asked how many people have consumed a bottle of water, I bet everybody would raise their hand. That water got put into the bottle in a factory. That bottle was injection blow molded at another factory. And how do you sanitize the inside of the bottle? You use the water as the sanitizing agent. So the water has been ozonated, it goes into the bottle, and that's how the water you consume is sanitary. Competition swimming pools in the US. By the organization's decree, all are ozonated water. For that matter, if you've been to a very large aquarium, right, and you see wonderful fish and they're great and they're big and they're huge, and there's thousands and thousands of gallons, you can almost read a newspaper on the other side of that tank. But you buy a fish tank at Walmart and take it home, it gets cloudy on the drive home. That water is ozonated to keep it clear. And lastly, as another example, if you've been to a fast food restaurant, typically a McDonald's, about half of the McDonald's in the US ozonate the feed water to the ice machine to keep the ice machine clean. Because here's a little trivial pursuit question you can get right. What's the dirtiest piece of equipment in any commercial restaurant? It's the ice machine. It's not the toilet seat, it's the ice machine. So you ozonate the feed water, it cleans the machine, you freeze it into ice, that ice goes into your beverage. So ozonated water is safe. In fact, it's been used in the medical community Dental practices are the most prolific users of ozonated water to modulate the control of disease in your mouth. Now, why dentist and everywhere else? If you get an infection in a dental procedure, your mouth is close to your brain. So that's one of the, the big concerns with dealing in the dental industry and making sure that the bacteria is controlled. All right, time for some dirty pictures. And, and you win a special prize if you know what back is pictured in the middle here. I know, because I put it there. But we're effective against bacteria and spores. And just in case someone doesn't know the difference, a bacteria is that squiggly thing in the middle. Spores are particular types of bacteria that are covered in a hard shell. And why is that important? Okay, time's up for guessing what that is. That is a C. diff, Clostridium differens. Now, if anyone knows, they may have known someone who got sick with C. diff. C. diff is a disease that you go to the hospital for. Many times you contract it in the hospital because that squiggly bug has lots of legs. It's very sticky and it is very transmissible by touch. C. diff doesn't respond to current treatments very well because it's covered in that hard candy shell. It's a spore. We kill C. diff in seven seconds. If you contract it in the hospital, you're hospitalized for two to three weeks and you're under incredible regimens of antibiotics and other things to try and kill it. We're also a powerful antiviral. Now, think about, we talked about soap and we talked about alcohol gel before. Little facts, soap doesn't kill bacteria. Soap doesn't kill virus. Soap works as a surfacant to 
ensnare that bacteria or virus or fungus and wash it down the drain. Now, there used to be soaps that had bacteria sides in them. You've heard of triclosan maybe. That got taken off the market because that's one, helps create superbugs. Two, it's really hard to pull that out of the water back at the water treatment plant. So ozone is a very, very powerful antiviral. So when we talk about coronavirus, we talk about influenza, neurovirus, these other types of viruses that uh, can cause a lot of sickness through touch. Norovirus is one of those, if you've been on a cruise ship, people worry about it in cruise ships or in schools. All right, here's an eye chart and this represents about 2% of the total list of bugs, bacteria, virus that we've tested IG2. Now, some things to know about. There is a, um, a level that is a good and a bad level. So it's typically three log, 99.9%. .9%. So when you see these things around, you'll see 99.9. .9%. So that's what's going on. Um, when we talk about these bugs, some of these I put up here that you would know as common. Staph, strep, flu, E. coli, serratia marcescens. That's a new one that you may not have heard of. For those, and I doubt anyone on this call falls in this category, if you're not mm, as a, a cleaner as you should be in your bathroom, in your toilet bowl or your shower, you may see a pink ring in your shower, your tub or your toilet bowl. That pink ring is serratia marcescens. C. diff, Clostridium difficile. We talked about that a little bit earlier. Candida albicans. Well, that's a crazy sounding one. That's a fungus. That one makes you very sick. Influenza, norovirus, coronavirus, not only the 229E, which is a surrogate for um, the coronavirus that has plagued us, but we also kill the Delta variant and many other variants as well. Now that's the effective part. That's why Iggy existed. You put your hands in, you pull them out, they're softer and killed a lot of bugs. Iggy does a lot more than that as well. It is a smart device. We are connected to the cloud, either by Wi-Fi radio or cell phone. If you want, we can have auto fold over if you lose your Wi-Fi signal. So what? You're collected, connected to the cloud. That allows us to push not only the use data up to the cloud, people putting their hands in, but also some of the machine data. What's the flow rate? What's the currents and voltages? What is the so what is it lets us pull that down and display it on a dashboard to help people who have this product installed in their building slice and dice the data and see how it's being used. One, what are the number of uses? Two, are they compliant or not? I mean, compliant is, did you keep your hands in the seven seconds or did you, you know, splash and dash, put them in and pull them out? You can slice it to a particular unit, a particular group of units on a floor, a building, a department. Um, so this is the way that we show customer use and do you need more training or not. Now we've also got the ability and hospitals and medical sites are big into this, where if you've got an RFID badge I can see that you're not just a user. I can see that you may be Jane Doe and, and identify you by name. Hospitals want that because of their compliance they need to keep for hand hygiene. We also talk about some of the machine data. Here's an example of connectivity and are we sending heartbeats correctly? You can see to the left side of, of this chart, 
what are the generator voltages, they're 17, 18, 14, so forth and so on. A lot of information. You can see at the bottom of the right hand graph, a number of the variables that you can turn on and turn off and track along the way. That helps us because it helps us understand how the machine works over time. It also is the precursor for a predictive maintenance program for the machine to verify uptime. Um, all of this you get along with clean hands. Now that's important because hand hygiene programs are only as good as the person who uses them. If you set up a hand hygiene program that says people should wash hands six times a shift, I'm just throwing out a number. Well, do you know, is anyone doing that? I can tell you right now, if you rely on the soap and water and the sink in the bathroom, it's not happening. This lets you know, are you executing to your hand hygiene protocol? And then compare that to things like absentee rates um, and so forth. Okay, we're wrapping up here a little bit, but I wanted to show this comparison chart. And it's, to me, that this is the most impactful chart out there. Soap and water, alcohol gel, current state of the art. Iggy is a breakthrough in that state of the art. So for soap and water, it takes 20 to 30 seconds and same for alcohol, Iggy seven seconds. In order to get the benefit from soap and alcohol, is it technique dependent? Do you have to do the hand jive correctly? Yes, you do. I'd ask if anyone's used alcohol gel, and I'd probably say most folks have, have you kept your hands wet for 30 seconds? It's a long time. Iggy, seven seconds. Water use, soap and water, gallon and a half, two and a half, three gallons, more if you're in New York City. Um, there's no water usage for alcohol. But there's a lot in the creation of alcohol. Iggy is a third of a gallon. Soap and alcohol have wastewater impact. Iggy does not. Soap and alcohol have solid waste impact. Iggy does not. Soap is not touchless. You have to turn the water on somehow. You have to touch the handle. There are some people that have IR sensors that turn things on and off. So it's maybe not 100% there. Alcohol, think about it. You have to squirt the bottle and everybody's dirty hand squirts that bottle. Iggy's completely touchless. Soap and alcohol are not smart. Iggy is, let you know is your program happening well and it gives you a read on the health of the machine. Now, the big thing about cost. For soap and water, when you add up the cost of the water, the cost of the soap, it's about four cents a wash. Same for alcohol, maybe a little more, a little less. Iggy is about the same thing. So you're not paying any more on a per cycle. And the other benefits you get give an ROI for Iggy that's at best about six months, at worst is a little bit over a year. So it's not cost prohibitive at all. Now you can listen to me talk about all the benefits and, and I think it's great because I've been involved with it, but other people have recognized the power of Iggy as well. On the America by Design as a TV show design competition we won the People's Choice Award. Uh, from the Indiana Business Journal, <clears throat> we won the best uh, or the CTO of the year. For Mira and TechPoint, we won the best tech of the year last year in 2021. Powder Keg Un Valley gave 3 we best place to work and most innovative place to work. The A4LE, which is the Association for Learning Environments, schools, they gave us the best solution of the year for Iggy. And we just recently were awarded this spring the Edison Gold Award for the best technology in the nation in 2022. So we think it's neat. Other people think it's neat. And you can see from what we spoke about, it's a pretty simple solution to make an age old problem easier, better and faster. So I'll stop here for a moment. We'll take questions and, and I would love to get to everyone's question if we can. Um, if not, if you still have questions afterwards, um, 
Mark from Hedrick is a fantastic, wonderfully smart human and can help and assist with any question you have. Here's his phone number, um, reach out and he'd be happy to answer questions too if you dream up something overnight. So I'll open it up. Well, thank you very much, Chris. Um, just looking through to see if any questions are rolling through. Um, I was curious about, um, you know, you showed a couple examples of where Iggy has been implemented in the beginning. And I was curious how the process has been with hospitals um, and getting it implemented and even maybe restaurants and other school systems. Now, great question. Let's um, divide the market into two big buckets. There's the public health market and the medical market. Uh, it can help in both of those for sure. The big difference is in the medical market to place it in a hospital, it needs FDA approval. And we're on that process right now. We're about ready to submit for the FDA approval. So we're only installed currently in public health settings in public health or schools, factories, uh, office buildings, entertainment venues, and we're all over the map there. Uh, the process has worked really well. And there's a couple of points about that. From an install standpoint, you need three things to install an Iggy. You need a 3 h water line for the water supply, an inch and a half drain line, and a 115 volt outlet. Everybody can get that. If you swap out a water fountain, it's right behind a water fountain today. If those facilities are available, it takes under 20 minutes to install an Iggy, verify it works, connect it to the cloud, and get it 100% functioning. And what's really interesting is people really like it and they like it for a couple of reasons. One, it's new, it's fancy, hey, it's, it's the shiny object. But that shiny object endures, particularly in schools. We had a, an example where an Iggy had a problem. We had to remove the Iggy and replace it. When it took about a day from taking it off to putting it on and the kids were just, hey, where did Iggy go? Is Iggy gonna get back? Is Iggy okay? So that really draws people to use the product, right? There's no children or no adults talking about the sink in the bathroom that way. Right, awesome, thank you. Um, another one we've got is, do any ozone particles escape into the atmosphere during use and or production? That's a great question. And the answer is, yes, they can. But, and this is a really big but, we have designed our product so that any off-gassing is maintained under 0.05 ppm of gaseous ozone. Now, that's great. What does that compare to? That is lower by a factor of two, the ozone exposure you get when you make a photocopy. If you walk out in the parking lot in the summertime, it is lower by a factor of four than the ozone you breathe in the parking lot, right? Because the let's talk about who regulates atmospheric ozone, ozone in the air. There's OSHA that does it from a workplace setting, right? If you got a welder in a factory, say, and that's 0.1 ppm over an eight hour period. It's a dosage. The EPA controls it outside, right? Environmental, what's in the parking lot? Um, and they control exposure limits and there's ozone action days. In the summer, you get ozone action days, right? There, from a medical device, because our product is, is medically focused, the FDA controls that and their limit is 0 0.05. So it's half of what OSHA NIOSH is and it's instantaneous rather than a dosage limit. So we are the lowest ozone producing device in existence right now. Okay, awesome. That's good to hear. I feel like ever, you know, hearing ozone can sometimes scare people. So it's always good to, to uh, clear that up or talk about that. Um, that was good information, thank you. Oh, great question. Um, 
Okay. Are units available for homes? And if so, what is the approximate cost? Great question. We're, we haven't focused on residential right now. We're focusing on commercial sales, industrial sales, you know, hair splitting, I know, because our goal is we want multiple units to sell, right? And if you sell a school, you don't buy one. They're like potato chips. You buy eight or 10. Or if you install a factory, there's more than one that you would buy. Right now, our unit cost, our MSRP is just under $30,000 each. That sounds like a big number, but it's really not because in a commercial environment with a great number of people using it, as we mentioned, your payback is about a year. It's under a year in some cases, maybe a fuzz over in others, depending if you're school or a factory. And it is much more likely to be consumed economically in that environment than in the home environment. We are looking for residential applications uh, in the future, but right now we're focused in commercial and industrial. Okay. Uh, do you know about how many Iggy units are installed currently? Yeah, currently we're just shy of about 800. Okay. Awesome. All right. And the last one we have, um, do you have any case studies and or like white papers that can be accessed somewhere? We do. Um, if, if you go to our website, 30escientific.com, you'll be able to find some of that. We are also continuously researching and publishing our own peer reviewed articles because there, there's a, a distinction between a white paper, something we would write and say, hey, it's informational, read it, versus a peer reviewed journal article. We've got two peer reviewed journal articles that have been published so far um, in the Journal of Wound Care and we're looking for others right now. And we've got two that should be coming out shortly. So you can look at the peer reviewed journal articles. You can look at the white paper articles. Okay, awesome. Well, we thank you again very much for your time today. And I would like to um, you know, repeat what you said about Mark and Hedrick. And if any of you are interested in uh, seeing this thing in action, reach out to Mark. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, so with that, I will also uh, um, shout out the reminder of our next webinar again on August 17th. So just look out for our newsletter. Um, the registration link will be coming in shortly. Um, oh, we did have one more question come through. So I will have, we do have a couple more minutes. So um, you had mentioned that dentists use this and this question is about um, using it with an open wound. It's an awesome question. And my, my short answer is do it, do it, do it. And this is why. <clears throat> um, way back earlier in the talk, you know, as people were going to sleep, listening to some of the technology business, there's ozone and it kills germs, but you're left with a whole lot of oxygen at the end. That is an amazing benefit for open wounds. Uh, and somebody, busted their knuckle with a wrench. You know, they have a cut, they have a burn, that type of thing. Um, we over oxygenate the wound site and debreed it from any germs, which aids in healing up to about two times faster. One of the articles that we've published in the, the Journal of Wound Care, the International Journal of Wound Care talks about the ability for wound healing and how ozone accelerates that. Um, we are also, to that point, we're working actively right now with the Mayo Clinic to evaluate particular uses in surgery. So that's the definition of an open wound, right? If you get a knee replacement or a hip replacement, there's a great big hole they put in you to get to your insides to do what has to be done and come out. So there are applications for aqueous ozone in that environment as well, because it can control the germ field as well as increase healing rate, which the faster you heal, the less opportunity you have for getting a post-operative infection. That is excellent question. Yeah, great question. It was very interesting. Um, if any other questions come up, you know, you can feel free to email any of us. Um, 
And then I'm just looking at Mark's comment here real quick. You can reach out to Mark. Um, yeah, great. Thank you again, Chris. This was this was awesome. And I feel like I learned a lot. So I hope everyone else did as well. Great. I'll, I'll leave everybody with this one thought. It's fun to hear about. It really is. But, but you know the difference between hearing about it and seven seconds inside Iggy. It is a difference maker. Once you experience it, all the words sort of come into play. They hang in the correct way on the grid. And I just tell people your experience. You put your hands in. Was it scary? <laughs> no. <laughs> and were your hands red and raw when they came out? No. How that jewelry look? Oh, the jewelry was fantastic. I was a little, well, you know, of course it was, Mark was uh, hyping it up a lot. So it was, it was quite the experience using it. And that jewelry was pretty flashy. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it makes a big difference. And, and I'd encourage everyone to, uh, to use it. And I, I think a lot of this will make tremendous more sense in seconds. So thank you, everyone. Great. Yes. I hope everyone enjoys the rest of your day.